our world and beyond. Space, in partnership with the European Space Agency. To observe something, you have to be able to see it. And to see it, you have to capture the electromagnetic rays emitted by a source of energy. Many rays are invisible, but in 1895, German physicist Wilhelm Röntgen discovered the high-frequency rays that we now call X-rays. X-rays is light. The difference is that X-rays have much more energy than the energy of our normal light. The X-rays we normally see only in a very negative context, in the context of a broken leg or a broken foot. In astrophysics, we are not interested on such a shadow. We are sehr interested on the source which emits the X-rays somewhere in the universe. ESAC is the European Space Astronomy Center near Madrid. Space plays an essential role in detecting and studying cosmic X-rays. X-rays cannot penetrate to the atmosphere of our planet. There is simply too much gas between us here on the ground and the space. Therefore, X-ray observatory has to be brought out of the atmosphere and there we can observe the X-ray sky. At the end of 1999, ESA, the European Space Agency, launched XMM Newton, a space observatory equipped with three telescopes that can see X-ray photons. And for the last 10 years, the scientific data has been collected here at ESAC. Our role is to verify scientific operations, what's happening with the onboard instruments and all the science acquired. Every 48 hours, the observatory makes an elliptic orbit, varying its distance from 7,000 to 114,000 kilometers away from Earth. This means the telescope is on safe mode for the eight hours that it spends traversing the dangerous energy particles of the Van Halen belt. The observatory is at the disposal of astronomers from all over the world. Those who want to use the XMM Newton submit a request which is evaluated by a scientific committee, which then greenlights the best projects, the ones worth developing. Scientists here at the Max Planck Institute in Garsching in Germany designed one of the observational instruments for the project and now, of course, they use it for their research. This is one of the mirror shells of XMM Newton. We have all together 58 of them and in three telescopes. That means three times 58 times this mirror shell. Laid out in concentric circles, the fine reflective blades of the three telescopes only deflect the photons by one degree, collecting the maximum number emitted by far-off X-ray sources. And this is one of the EPIC detectors. It's collecting all the photons of the big telescope where we saw before. Some phenomena observed are several million light-years away, but a part of the XMM Newton's research field. These three huge eyes watch things that were unknown or incomprehensible before the dawn of the space age. Using the X-rays generated by huge gravitational forces or by strong magnetic fields resulting from big events in the cosmos, scientists can now study strange celestial bodies. A neutron star is one uh, end stage of a star uh, in its life when the, the nuclear burning fuel is, is run out um, and the star is massive enough, it will expand, lose its atmosphere and the, the uh, inner part will fall into a neutron star with very high densities. The size of this neutron star is only typically 10 kilometers. It's a dangerous, greedy little monster which can form a binary system with another star and eventually gobble up its gases. The gases which spiral around the star reach temperatures of several million degrees and emit X-rays. This is one of the most fascinating topics in cosmology, black holes. The swirling edges generate enormous magnetic fields which snap up everything in their path.
A black hole is characterized by only two quantities, its mass and its spin. This means how quick it rotates. And if a black hole now rotates, it tracks the space-time around it. And such phenomena we can only study in our days with X-ray observations of black holes. Another example of X-ray astrophysics are clusters of galaxies. A cluster of galaxies contains some thousand galaxies, and in the optical we see only a small enhancement of small dots in the plates. In X-rays, clusters of galaxies are the brightest sources in the sky. In the year 1015, Chinese astrologists observed and recorded the explosion of the star which created the Crab Nebula, a supernova 6,300 light years from Earth. High temperature is one of the main production mechanisms of X-rays, but not the only one. Another example is synchrotron radiation. This we see in supernova remanents. When a supernova explodes, it generates a shock wave which goes out to the interstellar room, and this generates synchrotron radiation. And the synchrotron radiation, again, we see in the radio and in the X-rays, um, and two very different wavelengths, but this allows us to conclude about the mechanism. In 10 years, this mission has collected a wealth of data and changed the way we think about space. The first observation of XMM Newton made an enormous surprise. We have now for the first time an understanding on the creation of the supermassive black holes, on the creation of the galaxies, and on the cluster, how this is connected, how it grows together, and especially how this mechanism regulates the growth of all three components. Modern astronomy and space exploration are clarifying many of the mysteries of space, meaning that gradually scientists are discovering the origins of our galaxy. So to learn about these uh, structures, we can then uh, learn about how the Big Bang uh, happened and uh, evolved and how the matter then was formed and how the galaxies were formed and uh, how the matter uh, came to the distribution we have now. The XMM Newton mission has been so successful that it has been officially extended to the end of 2012. And scientists are hoping that it will then be extended until 2020.